Mr. Stilwell was arrested middle of a sacrifice of a goat. We don't believe. Hey, no, no, sir, Mr. Harvey, stop right now. Stop right now. Stop right now. Mr. Harvey, Mr. Harvey, sit down. I am not going to have you interrupt the court. You may object in just a moment. Days 116 and 117 of the Young Thug Wise Sell Rico trial were wild. The state and defense go over wiretaps of Demikian Garlington's phone, where he discusses Wise Sell members selling drugs and being nearby a murder scene. Yeah, Mr. Harvey pops off at the end of this video because Miss Love says something that's not accurate. The wiretaps consist of nothing but conversations with people that they can't cross examine, but it comes in because of the co conspirator rule. The defense has a hearsay objection like about 50 times today. <laughs> yeah, hit subscribe. Here we go. All right, first look at Thug on day 116. Looks tired like always. He has to wake up at like 4 a.m. There's Mr. Harvey and Mr. Nichols. If Gladys Knight and the Pips were singing, it would be admitting the actions of the Pips against Gladys Knight and that midnight train to Georgia. What is bro yapping about? I don't know any of these references. Who's who here? Jackson is Gladys and <laughs> Nichols are the Pips. <laughs> the, the Pips, yes. Mr. Nichols is a Pip. I don't know. Let me look at the video, but I would think that both Mr. Nichols and the Pips are in the background voluntarily. Oh, uh, so it's something about a video with Mr. Nichols in it. People threatening Mr. Stilwell reaching out for help to stay alive because the system has placed him in a cage with people who are potentially trying to kill him. The system putting him in a cage in a situation where he needs to reach out to help to survive and avoid having a shank plunged into him and then us using that against him. General objection to some of these quote unquote gang related statements. I'm sorry, is can't hear that at all. Yeah, I literally just had to raise my volume up. I was like, I cannot hear this shit. He let me know he's behind me. Everything's good. Thug sent him down there so I can interview him to see if I want him. Once again, they want to show that Thug got Shannon Stillwell a lawyer now. They've done this for other people, obviously. The big gang leader getting his uh, minions a lawyer. Thug sent that lawyer down here for me. I went and talked to the lawyer. I did not represent Mr. Stillwell in 2015. I did not meet St Mr. Stillwell in 2015. I am not the lawyer that represented that beat murder cases all the time and have represented all sorts of stars. This creates an impression to a jury that he is talking about me that Jeffrey Williams sent me, and I, and, I, and let me just be clear, I'm, I have no information that Jeffrey Williams sent anyone. M Mr. Williams sent a lawyer, I'm here representing Shannon Stillwell in 2024, and all that is completely false. I know who represented Mr. Stillwell in 2015, I don't know if that's the individual that's being discussed, but it wasn't me. I don't know of any information or any evidence that Mr. Williams ever hired a lawyer on behalf of Mr. Stillwell. This is misleading, it's confusing the issue, it creates the impression that Jeffrey Williams sent me, current counsel, and I'm continuing to work on behalf of Mr. Williams representing Mr. Stillwell. All that is false in the state, I would hope, would agree. Could definitely confuse the jury, making them think that Thug is currently paying for Shannon Stillwell's lawyer. I'm not sure what the relevance is, but certainly there's there's 403 issues. And there, in fact, was not any attorney hired by Mr. Williams for Mr. Uh, Mr. Stillwell, Mr. Jackson. Relevance goes, the fact that the alleged leader of the gang that Mr. Stillwell is a member of is securing for him representation for a murder that is alleged on this indictment that we allege that other members of this gang committed. I just feel like that's a reach though. Apparently a rapper who is wealthy can't get his friends a lawyer. <laughs> One of the ways that the gang protects its members is to pay bail for arrested um, gang members and enterprise members and to obtain and procure representation for them. The fact that Mr. Stillwell is relaying out of his own mouth that the alleged leader of YSL has sent someone down there and the fact that just such a massive reach has been according to mr stillwell working with all types of stars and murder cases and um he is saying in one of his songs that he's talking about paying a lawyer having beat a murder rap i don't think anyone is going to get the impression that mr sharp is the person who represented him and even if they did it doesn't in any way impact the 403 analysis it's definitely relevant evidence in that it makes the state's assertions um more likely than they would be without that evidence i just beat a murder rap paid my lawyer 30 for that the problem is that there, there's nothing to indicate that there's any connection between that particular lyric that we saw in that video and this conversation that mr stillwell is having with his significant other about um, an attorney coming to see him the, the important part i think uh, to add into the analysis is that you know mr williams does not hire an attorney for mr stillwell and so this has happened so Several times, by the way, where the state says, well, it's the leader of the gang getting a member a lawyer. But does he ever actually get him a lawyer? Is there any evidence of Thug ever paying for a lawyer for this person? No. And then, so for, for that reason, I would, I would say that, again, I don't believe it's relevant at all. I all think right. it does confuse the issue. It is admitted. I will give the instruction that it wasn't Mr. Shard if you want to come up with something like that. At least they're going to say it wasn't Max Shard, but... Okay, who entered an appearance, if anyone, on Mr. Stillwell's behalf in the 2015 case? A gentleman by the name of Michael Bixon. Anybody else? No. Okay, so some random public defender named Mr. Bixon. It wasn't anyone hired by anyone. Hey, Tony, they shine. What's their name? Who the big bro? He's my hit big bro, Montana. Bro, what channel do you got no way to? Hey, bro. Someone in jail said they were shine. 
talking about G Shine, I think, like the blood set. Shannon Stowell seems mad about it on this jail call. What's up, bro? Hello. Let, let me holler him. I think this is important to note. Um, at this point, a jail phone is being passed to a third individual. So we're about to hear a conversation between two individuals. Neither one of them are my client. Yeah, this is just irrelevant. Like, why? The, is, how is this even evidence to be shown to the jury in this trial when it's already taken this long? Roger, right, sir. I shine, you shine, we shine. Hey, who your, who your big fool, bro? Yo, my big fool, A1, bro. A1? Yeah, that's the big bro over Georgia, my nigga behind the G-Wall, five. You talking about behind G-Wall? Oh, right. He's not a good, he's not on pause, bro. He's not, he's shine, bro. He's a fish right, hurt, bro. He's in the lineup, bro. He's in tune, bro. So y'all have to embrace him, bro, and stand behind him, that's over. So, Something about embracing Shannon, like, I think, so, this is just a phone call. They want to show the jury that Shannon had to call one of his big homies to tell other people in jail that he was a member of Bloods or something. Okay, then you need to do it out, bro. No, you tell me, you talk to me today. The big bro, you let them know that I said Shannon is shine, bro. Shannon is shine. So, obviously, Max Shard is about to complain about this. No defense lawyer wants this in. Before I get started with the facts, I, I do not accept Miss Love's assertion that I bear the burden of proving that prejudice substantially outweighs probative value. I believe that they bear the burden that it doesn't. They're the proponent of the evidence. In November of 2015, Shannon was in a car. People shot into the car, tragically shot a young lady in the face, causing the car to crash and flip over several times. Shannon and the mother of his child were sent to the hospital. Shannon had a collapsed lung, several broken bones. While at the hospital, Detective Thorpe took out a warrant for Shannon for mur the murder of Donovan Thomas. Once Shannon was finally medically cleared, he was brought directly to Rice Street and dropped into this environment where he is wounded, hurt, apparently, from the context of this phone call, individuals who seem to be associated with the Bloods started threatening him. It's exactly what it sounds like. I believe the context of this call suggests Mr. Stillwell calls an individual, asks him to tell the people that are in jail with him to get off, basically get off his back and stop threatening him. It appears that Shannon is associated with G Shine, with their bloods. Shannon, there's no indication, takes has any part in that argument. I don't know where Shannon is at that time. They have an argument over blood politics, over who runs this, who runs that. One individual thinks a gentleman by the name of Montana is calling the shots. The other individual is saying Montana doesn't have the authority to call the shots. But either way, the message is sent. Shannon is hurt. Shannon is injured. Don't mess with Shannon. If this were a case about the G Shine bloods, my argument would be more difficult to make. This is a case allegedly about YSL and the alleged gang, criminal street gang, YSL. The state believes that they have this unbeatable argument, which they've brought out dozens of times already, and I'm sure they will again. Well, this is a hybrid gang, so therefore everything's relevant. No, it needs to be specific. They're saying that YSL is an entity, is a criminal street gang, and they're moving together to um, for a common purpose. This has nothing to do with YSL. This is internal blood politics, internal G-Shine politics, and quite frankly, my client just trying to survive in 901 Rice Street. Again, when Mr. Stillwell is not on the phone at all, I believe it said, is dub. A jury hearing that could quite possibly misinterpret that as thug. I was concerned I heard that at first. This is why Max Shar is one of the best lawyers on this case. Thug isn't even his client, making sure the judge knows that it could sound like thug for the jury. Don't believe any of this is relevant. I believe it's highly prejudicial. It's not relevant to this case, I should say. Part of the indictment wherein the state asserts YSL claims affiliation with the National Blood Gang, that some associates also um, claim uh, the blood subset gangs, uh, sex, money, murder, and 30D. We also go on within the indictment to discuss that um, YSL, as Mr. Shark correctly stated, is a hybrid gang that they actually have members of both Bloods and Crips. But specifically, we also assert that YSL associates often use and write the word black, which some of our witnesses have come forth and said means other things than what our experts have said, which is blood love all the time. Mr. Stillwell's words are words of a party opponent, um, that the words of the people, the person who spoke on his behalf when he gave him the phone is an adoptive admission. He's making these assertions on behalf of Mr. Stillwell. The state thinks it's relevant that Mr. Stillwell called someone else for help because he didn't call the authorities. He's in jail surrounded by the authorities, put there by the authorities. I don't know who he's supposed to call. It's low key a good point. When does Mr. Stillwell, obviously Mr. Stillwell starts the conversation. He gets back on the phone two different times. No, he actually is on the phone where Mr. Sharp stood up and said that from here on out, this is not gonna be him. You hear him throughout that portion. You hear Mr. Stillwell throughout that portion um, talking on the phone at various times. There is a point at which the talker on the, the call the person to whom he gives the phone right. says he went upstairs, but then you hear the person to whom he gave the phone to speak on his behalf continue to assert his credentials. I mean, I am going to overrule the object, the relevancy on the 403 objection. I find these to be either admissions by a party opponent or adoptive admissions. Yeah, I had a feeling this was going to go that way because he said it was separate because it's this is a YSL trial, not a blood trial. But the state says YSL had sex, money, murder in it. So with the court's permission, whenever it, it's time to play the next call. Can Maybe I can help us out. OK, that's not my client. And nor is the other call. The state is attributing calls that are not my client to my client. Uh oh, not good here. Not good, boys. Well, that might be an issue. You'll need to sort out at lunch. Let's go ahead and take our lunch break. Mr. Sharp concedes that Mr. Stillwell's 
commentary about Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Copeland telling on him and his expressed feelings about Kenneth Copeland are relevant. Our position is that that portion, I agree, is relevant because it is talking about his feelings and his knowledge of a witness in this case. Have him say whatever he was going to say about the case. So I think that would be relevant. Certainly the part about certain people being bloods, but not being real right. Um, I think that's all relevant. And She's going to let anything about bloods in. Mr. Stilwell is calling someone who lied on him a rat. Yikes. Defendant William, or thug, as he puts it in the call, getting um, him a lawyer. I'll point the court's attention to over at number 97, wherein there is in the lyric of the song, Just How It Is, the assertion gave the lawyer close to two mil. He handles all the killings. Speak about shit on wax. It's all my business. We know how to kill the biggest cats of all kittens. Um, and so our assertion would be... Every time Miss Love reads his lyrics, it gets me, bro. I agree. That's relevant. And I don't see a 403 issue with that. The judge is letting out a lot of this stuff, dude. Um, there is an effort to conceal his identity, conceal Mr. Williams of who he is. Um, and so they never reference him as thug. Oftentimes on jail calls, but as bro, slime, or different other terminologies. And so that is also what is important with this call, Your Honor. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm going to admit it over objection. And obviously, if y'all want to cross-examine the right person or put somebody on the stand to say he never got him a lawyer, that's up to y'all. So judge doesn't care. She just says y'all have to cross-examine and get it out. He never bought him a lawyer. First look at thug on day 117 now. And what I plan to do is once the state surrenders the witness on direct examination, I would get all my exhibits to the court, to the state, to the court reporter, like I said, and the jail calls, I won't use them for a while. My cross, I believe, is going to be lengthy. Days on Mr. Copeland. Okay. So Days on Mr. Copeland. Oh my God, that is going to be insane. So they have wiretaps of YSL members and all of this bullshit that could just be rumors or not true. And a lot of it's not even defendants in the room is going to be able to come in and be shown to a jury just because they're unindicted co-conspirators. There is a summary, a state summary in the exhibit that you just got forwarded by Mr. Atkins. And I appreciate him outlying that. I do. That makes it much easier for us to go seriatim. Summaries are in large part partially accurate. They're not fully accurate. So um, I'm, I'm confident that a number of us will object to all of this. And for the court's information, I don't believe any of the people on these conversations will be testifying. So um, in that regard, I think we need to go through them item by item. I ain't talking nobody about A.B. Oh, A.B. Yeah, you know he don't know. Dude, I'm sorry, but all these wiretaps that they're playing right now, you can't understand. Like, li you can understand 20% of it. Not even that, bro. Hey, you're in the charge. It's true, man. Call your phone. Somebody just ain't hitting them. Yeah. <laughs> what did he just say right there? Someone tell me what he just said. The last sentence. It literally it wasn't a coherent sentence. Someone's tripping. They called his phone. I think that's what he said. Hey, what the hell you been doing? You got perk? Man, I ain't got none, bro. No weed, no perk, no none. A call, as the court is aware, from Mr. Garlington's wiretap, where he is talking uh, and apprising an associate, unindicted, unnamed co-conspirator, whom we believe is a person that he is a 30 deep member. Nonetheless, regardless of who it is he's talking to, that person is an unindicted co-conspirator as well. In discussing what has just happened, they are alerting one another to something that has happened to one of theirs, and they are letting each other know what, for instance, Oomph Oomph and Big Slime, in that they rushed to the car to get fire. They had gotten into it. My cousin had told me he just pulled up. He know what happened. I'm fist to pull up, see what came up, come up. All of this precedes the Shamel Drinks murder. This is why sell Associates getting one another informed. Yeah, I know she's going to say they're informing each other. So that why sell Associates can take necessary steps, we believe, to avenge what has happened. And because of all of that, we believe that this is a co-conspirator statement, which furthers the interest of the conspiracy. That is why sale leaned over to talk to each other about who this could possibly be. They don't know how to say his name. They think it could be this person. And then they confidently declare he's an unindicted co-conspirator. They don't even know his name. This gentleman, whomever it is that Mr. Garlington is talking about, we've never received a list of unindicted co-conspirators. And it's just Okay, I suspect that's because if they knew their identity, they would be indicted co-conspirators. This, I mean, do you know no, the... No, I, I know that there are some who they know the identity of, but do you know the identity of this person? Not with certainty. That's just what... Not with certainty, but we're going to show it to a jury, and then the defense can't cross-examine the people on the phone. They only know D'Amica and Garlington. They only know one side of the conversation. So they don't even know the person that is yapping. When we asked the question, like, who do you think that this is? Investigator Viverio said, I believe that that is, and she gave us a name. Okay. But... There was not a further investigation on the recipients or the callers. Dude, co-conspirator rule is bullshit. This is horse shit. Calls. It's the context of the calls themselves that allow us to designate the nature of the call. Okay. Well, okay. So that 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 call, I, I don't know how anyone could determine that someone's an unindicted co-conspirator from the, the nature of that call. They're talking about past events. They're talking about gentlemen. It appears they're talking about gentlemen who were 
murdered earlier in that day. They're talking about past events. There's no, as far as I can tell, there's no planning. I, you know, to the extent that they're saying, oh, well, it's co-conspirators keeping themselves apprised. I don't know how they can make that statement with such confidence without even know, knowing who the person is. The alleged facts of the Shamal Drinks murder, there's a video camera that puts my client and a car that he's in and allegedly Demetri and Garlington's in that car, although he's never seen on any sort of video. That's a state's allegation. In a separate car is what appears to be Mr. Nichols and Mr. Farley in a car. And I think they're alleging uh, Mr. Boyer is also in that car. They're on, at the video, uh, on video at the gas station. By happenstance, Mr. Drinks pulls up to that gas station after they're already there. Now, let me be very clear. Mr. Stilwell did not commit this crime. However, I will say that Mr. Drinks was shot within minutes of him showing up at the gas station where these gentlemen already were. By even a state's theory, there's no conspiracy to kill Mr. Drinks. It's sheer happenstance. And by the state's theory, which we are saying is not true, the decision to kill Mr. Drinks would have occurred within minutes. So it's, it's all based on happenstance, a chance encounter, according to the state's theory. There's no grand conspiracy. Here. Oh, well, I didn't know that about the Shamel Drinks murder. The two aren't mutually exclusive in that there could be a conspiracy to kill people whenever you happen upon them. So, I mean, okay. you, if, you can make that argument, but they can certainly make the counter argument. Okay. And, and in that case, if that is a conspiracy to kill people, and again, we're just kind of assuming that there's no evidence of that, nothing in this call furthers all any right. such conspiracy. Um, on February 9th, 2022, Rayshawn Bennett, also known as YFN and Lucci, was stabbed in the Fulton County Jail by Jaden Myrick. Um, a YSL associate. He did not pass away, believing that they wanted to finish the job. On February 22nd, 2022, another YSL associate, Christian Eppinger, reached out to another YSL associate, um, Antonio Summon, to get permission to finish off what Jaden Myrick did not do. That information about Mr. Bennett being stabbed in the jail in February hit the media sometime early March. I think maybe around March 3rd or March 4th is when that information was released to the media. On March 11th, in the early morning hours, that is when Christian McMiller and Darius Ford were murdered, um, pending that release. We believe that they were murdered by Wyeth and Associates. Um, we have shell casings from the murder scene that match a shooting that happened on March 16th that I'll get to in a moment. There was another shooting on March 12th in which a YSL associate, Stephen Harris, shot at in the direction of 12 Atlanta Avenue, which is a YFN stronghold, hitting a YFN associate. His name is escaping me at the moment. Following that, um, there is a call that the court will hear in a moment in which there's a shootout on Cleveland Avenue in which Demikion Garlington, and I believe Mr. Stillwell are involved in a shootout on Cleveland Avenue. Shell Kel, who you've heard of, Kelvin Watts, repost a picture with Shamel Drinks, Kelvin Watts, and another individual that could have had some subliminal messaging that they were the persons responsible for killing Christian McMiller and Darius Ford two, a few days earlier. Then we had the murder of Shamel Drinks on March 14th at about 9.55 p.m. in the evening. And then following the murder of Shamel Drinks, we have on March 16th in the early morning hours around 12 o'clock a.m., another drive-by shooting um, where you will hear some jail calls, excuse me, not jail calls, wiretap calls um, of Mr. Garlington, Mr. Stilwell, and Mr. Farley actually at the house um, during the time of the drive-by shooting. Wiretap calls are going to come into that time period um, with, when all those events are happening. Go further and go into the conspiracy. Right. Right. Jesus. That's a, that's a whole lot of YFN versus YSL shit right there. Yeah, and DMs are like, man, bro, they died too. Yeah. So they're on, we're on, on the video chat shit. I'll, I'll give you, they don't seem to be plotting any retaliation in this call, but they do seem to be getting apprised of what's going on um, and it'd be an all out war and things like that. So um, I'm going to permit that under the co-conspirator exception. I heard a lot of, I think, and who is that? I got that on Instagram. So I, I want to have a continuing objection and I'll object again when it's appropriate to what's commonly referred to as nested hearsay, which is somebody saying what somebody else said. It's oh my God. It's like triple hearsay, dude. Quay Quay. Somebody said Quay Quay, not Qua Qua or Qua, but Quay Quay. And I think the response was, who's that? And then they talked a little bit about that. That is not Mr. Nichols. All right. Well, with regard to the nested hearsay objection, I don't think that what got posted on Instagram or anything like that that might be nested. It's only hearsay if it's being offered for the truth. And this that type is not, I think, being offered the truth. Is that correct, Ms. Love? It's being offered to show that they are trying to keep apprised of the latest that's going down between these rivaling factions. That is so overruled. Okay. But... They always say it's not for the truth of matter asserted. So we don't want to use it that it's the truth. We just want to show that they're just yapping about gang shit to each other. But the jury is going to hear it and be like, oh, is that true? Oh, did that that's the truth? Oh. The count involving Mr. Williams from 2022. Those other examples of related over acts mm -hmm. are from approximately nine years before this wiretap. Okay. And your honor. <laughs> The uh, counts, the substantive counts that you just referred to, they're all on May 9th, 2022. You should know that's the date that Mr. Williams was arrested. His home, his many homes actually in Atlanta and elsewhere. And um, law enforcement officers found several people who lived at that home. This yeah. was not a distribution. I mean, 
understand very clearly that um, the states alleging this and the states proving it as um, people people have drugs. They may be illegal, but people have drugs. People have parties. Sometimes people have a lot of drugs. And establishing that you've got a lot of drugs and establishing that you are intending to distribute those drugs to garner additional money for your alleged enterprise are two entirely different things. That'll be up to the jury to decide. They can offer their proof. Where the nigga with the parts? Hey, he ain't got no more. He don't got no more. Yeah. We, okay, have, so the we have the studio. You know you I'm, I'm, I'm outside the studio. Everybody in the studio has the sun. They just bought them out. Whether it proves it or not is yet to be determined, but I'll permit that under a uh, co-conspirator. We don't even know this girl. This girl's asking for perks. This rule is bullshit. Is this not part of any conspiracy, but also that Mr. Garlington informing someone that Mr. Stillwell is out of pills is not in furtherance of him selling pills? No, but it might establish that it's something that he typically does. I understand why the state wants it in to show that my client's a drug dealer, which is why I want it out. Um, but the, the, the hook for mm -hmm. admissibility is that it's in furtherance of the conspiracy as I understand the law of co-conspirator statements, and I don't believe it's in the furtherance of any conspiracy. So they're saying Shan Stowell is a drug dealer and furtherance of why sell is a gang, but I guarantee you all the money Shan Stowell makes goes straight to him and no one else in YSL. Like, I guarantee you there was not this big drug ring where all the money was going back to thug. That in asking for the pills, where are the pills, where are the pills, giving the information that the studio, they just bought him out, they are furthering the conspiracy by requesting more to be re-upped. Okay, so, I mean, I think it does show that Mr. Garlington is uh, involved in, has knowledge of um, SB's supply chain and when when he has it and when he doesn't and what has just happened, they've just been bought out. Um, I'm gonna permit it. I mean, again, whether that's an ultimately successful and convincing argument is for the jury. Seeking to get in the words of this young lady who cannot be, who is clearly a buyer. And if we're saying that YSL is a, is a set of sellers a conspiracy of sellers, she cannot be a conspirator with them. And that, that that's that's not right. Okay, um, well, I'm admitting his statements uh, under the co-conspirator exception and hers would just be to give context to what on earth he is talking about. Yes. I understand the court's ruling. Can the record also show that you consider that this is spilling the beans and it's not in furtherance of the conspiracy because all it's doing is saying the person doesn't have something that, that does not further the conspiracy. It's not like he is going to rob someone to get the drug. So I just ask that the record show we're not waiving that. Mr. Stillwell's apparently on the recording or what's alleged to be Ms. Stowe was saying, but I couldn't find it. I don't know what the state's theory on how this advances a, a conspiracy, I can guess, but the pronoun it doesn't make a lot of sense to fit their theory. From the state's reading of this call, they're trying to do a drive-by shooting, but they can't find the op, just to put it plainly. And and uh, and then when they're asking, when one is asking what you get into and the other one says the same old shit, the same shit, essentially they are apprising one another of their efforts to shoot an opposition gang member. I mean, the whole context of it, you can tell that's exactly what they're talking about is what Ms. Love um, just offered. I'm going to admit it both as an admission by a party opponent and or, under the co-conspirator exception. May we have a continuing objection to all these? Sure. Thank you. Mr. Garlington letting the other male know about things that may put them in danger. Person believes one of the opposition members believe that Shannon and Pokey um, set her up. He's a the call the, the other male that he's talking to this person is asserting they know where all the drops and the spots are in keeping them one another co-conspirators up to date on possible actions that might be harmful to the group they are allowing each other to remain alert and ready for any action that may come as a result of what this person that they're talking about is doing the same objections but i heard a lot of nested hearsay in this there's speculation rv just keeps saying nested hearsay left and right they heard it it's replete with nested hearsay and we still don't have an identification of the person being called so for all the reasons that we've said before i think that this cannot be considered to be something that fits within the particular definition of 801 d2e as far as distinct what they're talking about and distinct crimes i'm a little lost when I listen to that. So I don't know how, if we don't even really know distinctly what they're talking about, I don't know how we could d deem their subject matter part of a distinct conspiracy. All right. I mean, I rule that that's admissible. Of course you are. She's letting all this co-conspirator bullshit come in, boys. And I understand, I understand, you know, things are for the jury to determine. But my point, Your Honor, the danger of this is everyone sounds suspect when they're on a wiretap. I mean, that's... <laughs> everyone sounds suspect. You hear a wiretap conversation, it sounds suspect. And the reality is... Later on in this, we're going to hear some more calls. Stillwell talks about bringing things out wrapped in a towel, bringing things out, make sure it's white. And he here's the thing. We, we, we litigated huh? some things earlier. Mr. Stillwell was arrested middle of a sacrifice of a goat. Okay, I remember this. I remember when I first heard this, I was like, what the f 
Thugger, you talking about sacrifice of goats, but apparently Thugger Daily tweeted out saying this has something to do with uh, Shannon's religion. And the backstory behind that, E5 religion and different practices involving that, we, we suppressed that information. I don't think I should have to argue this to the jury and bring up religion, but the reality is there's multiple references of bringing things in towels. And as part of that religion, there's a thing called elekis, elekes, and they're the beats. And they're not to be brought outside unless wrapped in a towel and preferably a white towel. They're supposed to be wrapped, not exposed to the element or outside. Demand that they have some actual evidence of this is what they're talking about and it furthers their, the conspiracy, not, oh, we think this is what they could be talking about. And, that, and that's my concern. Okay. And it seems to me that the timeline that they provided is enough of the evidence to suffice. It's, it's not in a vacuum. That's why I said they had like 45 gun sales out there. 45 gun sales? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no cash flow, just get back. We already D, you better show that down somewhere. I am, but still, bro. I am, but sit down. I'm going to sit down, bro. You better show that down somewhere, man. I am, I am, but bro, nigga, that issue the game, you might have fun. I be prepared for shit. If a nigga pay with me, they, they know this ain't going to be easy. Okay. I just got to a shootout early. Don't Why the fuck you get to a shootout, D? Random girl says, why are you getting a shootout, D? And Demikion replies, because it was something, 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 me and Shannon. Why would you? Oh, my God. Because the car, they were three deep with hoods on, so I had to shoot. I don't know. Today, it was the day on Cleveland. Surprising him that people say that there were 45 gun shells out there. He is telling her um, that they're going to get they're going to get some get back. There's going to be retaliation. Those come in under um, that exception. Dude, this is definitely not a good look for the jury to hear, but if they give them transcripts, because you can't understand this shit, how are the jury going to understand any of this? This is classic spilling the beans. It should be noted that Mr. Garlington says at the very end, I'm drunk as F. So he's intoxicated. He's talking to a girl. He's uh, likely boasting, seem tough for his own personal reasons, and it's not furthering the conspiracy in any way, shape, or form. I don't believe this would come in under the co-conspirator exception. There are portions of it that would come in um, as a statement against penal interest, but it's going to need to be a whole lot more narrow than this entire conversation. And we, I don't anticipate hearing any evidence that there's any sort of profit sharing or anything else involved in drug distribution. We've heard about Durante BB selling drugs at a gas station. There was no indication that any of that money, Mr. Trontavia Stephen talked about his sale of drugs. He, he actually testified and we asked him and he was like, no, it was worth like $150. I'm not giving it to anyone. It, I, I was selling drugs. That's what I've been saying. Like, yeah, there's obviously evidence that people were selling drugs and why I sell, but there wasn't a profit sharing side to it. But I don't think they need that. They just need to prove that people were in a gang and were also committing crimes and furtherance of the gang. But what is in furtherance? If they're not profit sharing, that's not in furtherance, right? It appears, it actually appears that they're talking about drugs and not selling drugs for the time being. That's not really furthering any conspiracy. We're just end arounding how to get in bad character evidence about Mr. Stillwell, about talking about drugs with Mr. Garland. And so I don't believe it's part of any conspiracy. I don't believe it's in furtherance of any conspiracy. And I don't believe it's relevant and, and it is prejudicial. And so 401, 403 and hearsay are my objections. I don't hear how any of what gets said in this particular conversation can be in furtherance of a conspiracy. So I'm gonna exclude this. All right, so the judge ain't letting that one in, makes sense. Unless you've got evidence that this was, all right, we're getting together to go send out and start looking so that we can act on our plan, then this cannot come in under co-conspirator. Yeah. It may come in under something else. Good point from the judge for once. And, and who's going to identify the voice? Because it's not Mr. Nichols on that call. Ah. Yeah, and we'll lay the foundation as to the call and where it comes from on the uh, on the wiretap. Well, what a shit show. <laughs> this whole thing is such a shit show with wiretaps, dude. This call is um, made and is between Demikia and Garlington and one of the people um, who were in the car with uh, Mr. Nichols talking about having rolled back through the scene. The police were on the scene of the Chamel Drinks murder. I didn't hear all that. We're right here. We're right here. Right here. Yeah, well. Right past, right see. Okay, so it's right there okay, at okay. 31 seconds. And we the phone records, when he said right here, right past the scene, their phone records put them at the scene at that time. Yikes. I get riding past the scene. We, we don't believe that's trying what he, to see. That's riding past, trying to see at the scene. Let me hear but that. She keeps saying scene and no one says know, scene. Let me hear it again. The court can judge whatever is being said. Whatever it is, they're riding past to see or the scene. Their phone records place them at the scene of the Chamel Drinks murder at the time that the call is made. But, but Your Honor, this is the problem. The state keeps asserting things as fact. He said through the scene and now I'm, I'm just pushing back moderately. And now it's like, well, we don't really know what was said. And your honor needs to know what was said to be able to judge it. And if the state doesn't know, they shouldn't be asserting as fact. This person said Rodney Pack passed the scene. They don't know that's what's said. And my belief, and I'm not going to assert it as fact, but what I'm telling the court is after listening to that numerous times on my own and several times in court now, I'm not hearing scene. And I don't think anyone else. Right, Pat, trying to see. Yeah. Ryan Pass trying to see. He's asking where where are you, and he said riding right here, 
riding past the scene, trying to see, either way you look at it, that the, the point at which he is saying that, yes, they are trying to apprise the, each other's location. And that person right there saying that he is riding past, his phone puts him at the um, place where Shamel Drinks was murdered mm -hmm. at that moment. I'm hearing, and I think everyone else is hearing over here, riding past around the city, okay, around the city. I mean, and maybe he is saying around the city if they've got something that's going to show I don't them. believe, well, they just it said. I mean, it honestly doesn't matter whether he's saying riding around the city or riding past the scene when what they're trying to do is communicate with each other about what's going down between them right after they have allegedly shot and killed somebody. Well, it's 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 four hours after Mr. Drinks was shot. The context of all this meeting up is to go to the studio. That's the part that the state's not playing. They're all going to a music studio. If Mr. Garlington really said, I'm riding around the, past the scene, that would be some damning evidence. We just shouldn't be throwing that out without knowing that's what's said. All right, well, I'm not gonna let them hand to the jury a transcript of this call that says that, because I don't think, I mean, it's up for debate what it says. I don't think, you know, y'all don't agree, I don't agree. Who knows what it says? I mean, it could very well be a part of a conspiracy and they could be meeting up at the studio to figure out what it is that they're gonna do next. Not for me to determine. That is part of their theory. They can present this evidence in support of that theory. Whether the jury buys it or not, will be up to the jury. Two things. One, Demikian Garlington himself in a call we have not reached, he explains, get on FaceTime because they can't record that SHIT. So he says that. I don't remember the exact call, but we'll get to it eventually. And so for one, that's his own statement. These motherfuckers are talking way too much. Why was he saying something like that? So I was going to ask for an instruction, especially if you let things in that's not in furtherance of a conspiracy, because then that should not touch Mr. Williams. So I since Thug is not on any of these calls and she's letting in stuff that's not in furtherance of a conspiracy, which Thug is charged with, none of it should involve Thug whatsoever. This I am admitting as being in furtherance of the conspiracy. So with regard to any that I have let in, not under that basis, but under a different evidentiary exception, if y'all wouldn't mind, um, is the one that I let in as a statement against penal interest. Statement that merely recounts what happened. And that's the whole tenor of this conversation is not in furtherance of the conspiracy so you know buzzwords go both ways baby and um i'm just as tired of hearing the cohesiveness and keeping people apprised um so you know it, it, there are two ways that this so apparently mr harvey right here is like a legendary lawyer in atlanta i saw a comment describing him that way so how the hell y'all ain't got no drop on these so they're discussing trying to find the location of ops when they're they're discussing about those other people shot us and the state theories they're talking about the rival gang one of their partners died a few nights ago which the state believes they're talking about chanel drinks because this happens after that and so the state feels that this conversation discussing all of those things um even if it's kind of thinly veiled is again keeping abreast of the gangs uh the criminal street gangs activities and sheds light on how they are viewing what happened at waters road that man mama let the paper went let the paper for the film Oh yeah, yeah, they were like, they say your mom like, well, she only wanted to come. Yeah, they said she only wanted to come. Let Thug pay for it or something. All right, so I can see the part about needing to get drugs and money to, you know, to sell coming in as a co-conspirator statement. The rest of it, you're gonna have to flush out a little bit more how that is anything more than them just kind of talking about stuff that's already happened and a funeral that's gonna happen, but that isn't. Confessing to that, but it's the fact that they're laughing saying that, that I think that I, the state believes is important in terms of when they make that comment, that reaction that they both have kind of instantaneously is an important contextual detail of how they discuss kind of light reference to something that's eerily similar to the murder of Chanel Drinks. All conspiracy. The judge is going to let it in because they want the jury to decide, but this is bullshit. This call, and I'm going by the state's notes as well. This call has Garlington relaying what SB's cousin, that, that would be my client's cousin, said to him about being followed. Um, that, that would be hearsay within hearsay. So I'd ask that, that, that anything involving what was said by my client's cousin be redacted. Dude, wiretaps are so messy, man. Garlington saying Funk told him that Nichols said he needs to pay. We did this for him, so he needs to get us. It's like four different people relaying what someone said, dude. And your honor, the state feels- But said it to Rel, not It to doesn't Funk. matter who he said it to. It, it sounds like Funk heard it regardless. He, no. Do I have that part wrong? I think you do because okay. he said it to Rel. Rel said it to somebody else. Nichols said it to Rel. Well, allegedly. allegedly. Allegedly, I understand. Yes, yes. And then Rel to Funk, oh, then Funk to Garlington. So that's four layers at least. The statements are admissible without a showing of the declarant's personal knowledge. And I may have been off kilter where I was thinking of this is what I was thinking of by reference to the court. Mr. Harvey's freaking out over here. And and basically, Nichols trying to get help for himself. Like, he need, bro needs to pay for a lawyer. We did it for him. We don't believe. Hey, no, no, sir, Mr. Harvey, stop right now. Stop right now. Stop right now. Mr. Harvey, Mr. Harvey, sit down. I am not going to have you interrupt the court. 
You may object in just a moment. Oh no, Mr. Harvey's fed up. So I think Miss Love just said something inaccurately there. We will get to your objection in a moment. Thank you, Your Honor. There has been no showing that this information is so substantially more prejudicial than probative that it should permit the exclusion of what we believe is obviously relevant evidence. Okay, thank you. Mr. Harvey, your objection. My objection is for making things up to the court. Making things up to the court. His mic's off. It's to the court. I don't even understand that to be what she said. Okay, well, the record will reflect what she said, but I understood her to be talking about what was being said within the context of this conversation we just listened to. Your Honor, just yes. I'm, I'm going to listen to it again. I wish his mic was on. Just because the state says something is so doesn't make it so. I understand. And the state is saying, oh, well, this was done in furtherance of the conspiracy. This was done in furtherance of the conspiracy. The, the whole point of the hearsay rules, and I understand that the uh, confrontation clause might not be implicated here, but the hearsay rules, the whole point of the hearsay rules is you get to see who's saying it, know what their basis is. You get to cross-examine them. They come to court, etc. cetera. And, and the problem here is the state can, is just sitting here saying, oh, well, clearly Mr. Uh, Umfunk did this to further the conspiracy. And clear. How do we know? How does she know? Maybe, maybe Umfunk, I'm not saying this is the case, but what if Umfunk was involved? Umfunk would have every reason to, to shift responsibility to other people. What about the next line in the, in, in the hearsay ladder that we have? We don't know what people's motivations are. And, and just because the state says, well, their motivation was to do this or do that, she's not inside Umfunk's head. She's not inside Rel's head. So I, I reject that their argument that they can just label things as hearsay exceptions and it makes it so. Well, I, I understand that. I, I take what everybody says as your argument in support of your position. I don't accept it as fact. I, it's an argument. I hear the counter argument. Sometimes I hear a lot more counter arguments back and forth after that. And then I make a determination about whether our evidence rules permit this particular evidence. The point of the hearsay rules and all of the evidence rules is so that to the extent the court can help it, only trustworthy information gets before the jury and that's what we're trying to sort out here all right that's pretty much it for days 116 117 a lot of wiretap debates a lot of it's hearsay but it's definitely not a good look for wise hell i hate the co-conspirator rule literally 99 percent of this would never come in if it wasn't a co-conspirator situation so it's just really annoying hit subscribe join channel memberships only 10 cents per day love you guys peace out Diamond.